Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Sunday, October 2nd, 2016. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office. Well, here's Hurricane Matthew continuing to maintain Category 4 intensity, winds of 145 miles per hour, and beginning to move slowly toward the north-northwest, toward the area between Jamaica and Haiti, expected to be in that area by tomorrow night on Monday. Uh, currently expected to be a little closer to Haiti than to Jamaica, uh, but some wobbles in the hurricane's track could bring the eye a little bit closer to either of these countries while it's in this region. You can see one of those wobbles perhaps happening now. You might think the track is turning more toward due west, but that is likely just one of the wobbles. These are called trochoidal oscillations, which simply consist of the hurricane doing little circles in its track as it moves toward the north-northwest. Uh, the mean motion, the average motion, continues in the same direction, but these little circular loops can make it appear like it's changing direction from time to time. This simply happens when the vorticity distribution in the hurricane's core is somewhat asymmetric. Uh, they are perfectly normal in hurricanes of this intensity, um, but it is not turning due west here. It is just doing a wobble, and then the mean motion is still in general toward the passage between Jamaica and Haiti. Uh, right now, again, the forecast is a little closer to Haiti, but these little wobbles could bring it closer or farther away to either of these coastlines as it passes by. Uh, could this strengthen on its way toward uh, this region? Well, uh, there's a couple of things going on with the hurricane right now. You'll notice that the eye is uh, not very clear in appearance, and the thunderstorms in the inner core are not particularly impressive today. They are not very tall uh, relative to what they could be if the hurricane was healthier. So although it is a Category 4, it is uh, still dealing with some ill effects, perhaps from some dry air on the western side, which we can tell is there because of these outflow boundaries forming. You can see thunderstorms going up and then collapsing in the western part of the hurricane and so some of this dry air may be periodically getting wrapped around into the outer core and then affecting the thunderstorms in the eye wall and uh, causing breaks in that eye such that it is not fully closed 360 degrees around that could be occurring. We also could have some upwelling going on. The hurricane was moving very slowly near the coast of Colombia over the last couple of days, so this water may be much cooler than it was before the hurricane arrived, and so there may be some inflow passing over this colder ocean water and then getting into the core, also inducing weakening because it's cooler uh, and has less moisture available with it when it gets into the eye wall and then rises. So uh, there are a couple of things that could be limiting the hurricane at the moment. However, as the system gets north of where it is now the water gets warmer and deeper and so unfortunately there may be some better conditions in the ocean for the system to be able to intensify as it moves toward the north so we'll have to keep an eye out for that uh, there also may be an eye wall replacement cycle at some point that can also cause a fluctuation in intensity it hasn't happened yet we've been thinking one might happen soon but we still have this tiny eye and on microwave imagery this is what we see tiny eye in here we keep having these bands form in the outer core but they have not yet closed off around the whole eye and formed a second eye wall. That's the classic sign of an eye wall replacement is when you see what looks like a double eye wall. Uh, that has not happened yet. If it does happen, it's normally associated with weakening somewhat for a time and then re-strengthening after the cycle completes, but we have not seen one start yet. In general, though, you can see the eye remains somewhat ill-defined and perhaps not fully closed at times due to some of this dry air that you can see in, in spots maybe getting wrapped in on the west side that we just talked about. If it is able to undergo an eye wall replacement or solidify this inner eye such that it clears out, we may see some intensification as it comes north. Otherwise, some weakening and strengthening episodes may occur as it moves north. Either way, this is going to be a major hurricane regardless of these fluctuations as it moves into the area. And by far, the biggest problem with this hurricane is going to be rainfall in Haiti, eastern Cuba, Jamaica, where up to a meter of rain could fall over these tall mountains causing uh, life-threatening mudslides, flash flooding, in addition storm surge into the coasts of Haiti, eastern Cuba, and Jamaica can cause flooding near the coastlines. And even in the Dominican Republic, these outer bands that you see here can bring very heavy rains to the country far away from the core of the hurricane. Even if there's not much wind associated with these outer bands, the heavy rains can cause life-threatening problems in terms of flooding. And uh, hurricanes in this position before have caused hundreds of casualties in this region of the world. So please be prepared. Water is by far the most life-threatening hazard with a hurricane in the greater Antilles. 
As far as the upper level environment goes on water vapor, we continue to see expansive outflow on all sides of the storm, uh, indicating that shear really hasn't hampered development very much of the hurricane. This trough over the eastern Gulf of Mexico may still be imparting some very weak southwesterly shear over the northwest Caribbean right now, but the base of this trough will be exiting to the northeast over the next few days and the tail will be cut off and will continue to weaken and perhaps drift southwest over time as the hurricane moves northward. This will likely continue to reduce the shear in the vicinity of Cuba and the Bahamas such that when the hurricane moves up in here, conditions aloft are still going to be pretty favorable in general. There are of course other variables that could uh, weaken the system, but in terms of the upper levels, things will be pretty favorable for the hurricane as it moves north over the next two to three days. Where does it go after that? Well, here's the upper pattern from the GFS. This is on Tuesday afternoon. This is when the hurricane is expected to be over eastern Cuba uh, after moving through Jamaica and Haiti sometime on Monday night. Now these are the same players that we've been talking about for days now. I'll run you through them again. This is the ridge to the east near Bermuda which will start steering the hurricane more toward the north-northwest as it enters the Bahamas. There's this trough off of New England. This is the upper low currently over the Ohio Valley that moves east and this remains kind of in here hanging around. What this does is it prevents the ridge over Bermuda from immediately connecting to the ridge that's currently over New England and forming a giant singular ridge over here. Uh, this is perhaps the saving grace for the United States on most of the model forecasts right now as it prevents this ridge from getting too strong too fast. If this were to occur, if this trough was not here for instance, this ridge would build in, connect to this one and form a strong northwesterly path toward the US coast in the steering flow for Matthew. As it stands, this uh, little trough in here is preventing this ridge from building in too much, such that it moves slowly toward the northwest. And unfortunately, this slow movement could cause uh, big problems for the Bahamas. If we go out to uh, Saturday evening, you can see where the hurricane is. 48 hours have gone by and the hurricane has only moved this much. Uh, this is unfortunately a slow moving situation perhaps for the Bahamas, which means prolonged extended periods of high winds uh, storm surge and heavy rains, all of which can increase the damage done to some of these islands and it may move up much of the chain of islands here causing adverse conditions to the entirety of the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos perhaps over the next few days. So unfortunately this will be a slow mover which also means it could strengthen in that region as it passes through the islands as well. Note though that between Tuesday afternoon when the hurricane's here and uh, Thursday evening when the hurricane is here that this trough does start to slide east a bit and so you do start to see this ridging connection as this ridge does build northeast of the hurricane. Now the big big question is how strong does this ridge get? It has to get strong enough in order to get this into the US coastline but at the moment most model forecasts uh, keep this ridge uh, just weak enough that the hurricane begins to slip uh, just to the east and out to sea as this shortwave trough begins to erode this blocking ridge over New England such that by the time we get to Saturday afternoon you can see that the hurricane begins to move northeast and toward the open ocean as this shortwave breaks down that ridge and moves it off to the east so that there's now an alleyway out to the northeast. However, there are a lot of moving parts here and there are a few things that could go wrong uh, for the United States. Uh, the first one is if this trough uh, over New England is weaker than forecast and or faster to get east. If that happens, this ridge has a chance to build in toward the coast and force the hurricane a little bit closer to the coastline as it turns. The second uh, problem could be if the hurricane is slower than currently forecast. So if we go out to a Thursday evening, if the hurricane is here on the GFS, if it happens to be slower, say back here in the central Bahamas, then this trough has more time to move away. This ridge has more time to build if the hurricane is farther south and then the path could again be closer to the United States coastline. The third way that this could impact the U.S. is later on if something like this happens, if the hurricane does turn northeast, it still could be that if this trough tilts negative and has the correct timing that it could phase with the hurricane and pull it up toward the north-northwest and into New England. Sort of similar to Sandy, not nearly as extreme, but that's the most recent example, pulling the storm to the left and into New England. Um, all three of these options that I've just mentioned, they are hard to, uh, they're difficult to occur. Uh, it takes a lot to go right 
for the system to actually directly impact the United States. But all three of these options remain on the table because of the uncertainty in all of these little players that we're dealing with right now and how fast the hurricane moves. The models have done very poorly so far with Matthew's forward speed. How fast is it moving north? That continues to change. The character of this plains trough continues to change. How fast will it break down the ridge? How fast will this trough leave? How fast and how much will this ridge build in? All of these things can still change. We're talking about here's day four, day six, six day forecast. Very, very low skill in predicting where Matthew will be in six days. So this is something that the eastern United States should still keep an eye on. At the moment, the forecast uh, consensus and the National Hurricane Center forecast continue to keep this offshore of the United States for the moment. This is by 2 p.m. Friday. It is offshore. But you can see the cone of uncertainty here, and this is uncomfortably close to the United States. So this is a situation in which you should have a hurricane plan ready to go just in case the forecast changes. We have seen it change so far in a couple of ways and it may change again. Uh, that's always a possibility and this is a particularly complicated and uncertain situation in the longer range. So by late week and into the weekend this is still something that the United States may have to keep an eye on. But what we are sure of are impacts to Jamaica, Haiti, Eastern Cuba, Dominican Republic, most of the Bahamas are likely to see direct impacts from Hurricane Matthew, and this is likely to be a major hurricane in most of these areas. Hurricane warnings up for Eastern Cuba, Jamaica, and Haiti for Monday night, and then uh, Cuba by late Monday night and into Tuesday. And then Bahamas now have a hurricane watch along with the Turks and Caicos and a portion of the central Cuban coastline for later Tuesday and into Wednesday as the hurricane moves north. Again, weakening will likely occur as it moves over the mountains of Cuba and or Haiti. However, it could rebound over the Bahamas. Right now, the official forecast does actually show weakening through the three to five day period, but I have to say there is a chance that it may re-strengthen on the other side of Cuba. So this could be a major hurricane all through the Bahamas here, given the favorable conditions it may face after it crosses Cuba. Overall, though, this will be a powerful hurricane regardless of even slight weakening. This would still be a major, major problem and life-threatening event for all of these countries in this region of the world. So please have a plan and be safe and keep an eye to your local weather office and the National Hurricane Center for the latest information on the very dangerous Hurricane Matthew. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.